Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Buzzing About Romance. I am Becky, and joining me for this episode is Leah. Hi, Leah. Hi. Um, and Amanda. Hey, Amanda. Hello. And Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hey, Becky. Um, do we need to say hi to your peanut gallery? No. No. He's leaving. He's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, apparently here in the north, but not in Florida, it is be- beanie season, so we will be seeing Leah's um, mass collection of beanies on her head. It's not a mass collection. Leah. I matched my beanie to my chucks today. Nice. We did drop below 80 today. So. You did? Yeah. Well, we okay. were, it was 42 degrees, I think, when I walked to the bus stop this morning. We have a frost warning, and I will know that when I had to chase Ollie earlier this morning, I could see my breath. So. My grass has been crunchy regularly in the morning when we go to the bus stop. I do love a crunchy grass season. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> um, okay, so we are still continuing our October guest new tradition of our Out of This World not reality picks. Um, these are not contemporary, not even slightly. Mm-hmm. Becky is not really a fan. <laughs> this is not Becky's comfort zone or safe place. No, it's um, not. It is, however, Amanda's. It is. Yes. Uh, I'm very deep into the paranormal and fantasy right now. Well, (laughs) it's not a bad place to be. Um, Earlier today, we were talking about something. And Amanda's like, I'm on to book four. I am. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I started Sunday. (laughs) (laughs) So I will say they're shorter, like easy reads. So they are easy. It is going to be an easy series to binge. So if you like a good binge, like this is a series for you. Samantha Whiskey, like she writes a shorter book. It's a tighter book. You will get through it fairly easily. Yeah, it is a quick read. It is. Um, so on this episode, we are reviewing The Chris- Crimson Covenant by Samantha Whiskey. This is book one in the Onyx Assassins series. Um, and this is a five book series. And then it's spinning off. No, I think the That's current like- one out is like nine. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Almost like this is a nine way more than five. Okay. Yeah, yeah it just it's released actually today. a pretty big series. It's a novella, so it's like a companion piece, I think. Oh, like, is it? Okay. Aaron's telling me. Yeah, because it's, it's the hunter book. side, not like the vampire side. Aaron is telling Hi, us Aaron. it's eight. <laughs> it's yes, eight. Aaron is a big Samantha Whiskey fan. So, I'm a huge you, Samantha Whiskey fan, and I'll be really honest, like, I wasn't sure how this would read if her voice would change because the genre is changing. And it really doesn't. Mm-hmm. Like, it was a tight mm-hmm. Samantha Whiskey story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because oftentimes when authors, like, hop genres or subgenres, like, they're, they definitely, like, have a different, or even when they hop, like, publishers, like, the voice changes a lot. Um, okay, who wants to tell us all the things? Because Heather is not here to raise her hand. I can do it. <laughs> oh, and she rose her hand. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the subgenre is urban fantasy. The release date is December 5th, 2020, so it was, is a little bit older. Um, the tropes are virgin heroine, vampires, demons, mafia-esque, but not really. It reads like mafia. I'm telling you, that's it a, reads. That's a Becky trope. Secret it's not society. An trope. Would you call it secret <clears throat> society then? It's more secret yeah. society, yeah. Um, royalty slash hierarchy, um, alpha male, class difference slash species difference, and they are fated mates with an instant connection. Um, it is part of the Onyx Assassin series. It is interconnected standalones because I do think that, like, I did not read, but Amanda can verify. But I think there is storylines that, like, interweave throughout, the, like, the whole series. There is. Um, it is told in first person, dual point of view. The put out percentage is 33%. They are horny friends. Like once they start having sex, so, they have lots of sex. I would say again, this is probably sixty percent sexy times and about forty percent <laughs> story times. And so with that though, I would argue that it is more paranormal than urban fantasy. Because so, urban fantasy yes. leans a little less I have on the to sexy t- times. I have to tell you why I said urban fantasy. It's romantic urban fantasy. Technically, within the publishing genre, 
vampires are classified mm-hmm. under romantic urban fantasy. Not paranormal. And not paranormal fantasy, in the scheme of publishing. Okay. Okay, I mean, I get that, that, but I would, I would say, like, it's because no. <laughs> it is technically contemporary world. Like, if you look at, yeah. say, Charlene Harris and yeah. her uh, Sookie Sackhouse series, that yeah. is classified, even though it's all sorts of different creatures that you would think, oh, this is going to be paranormal, yeah. because it takes place in contemporary setting with humans. They consider it uh, rom- uh, urban fantasy, romantic urban fantasy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I and I get that. I think, but what I was like, because I used to like question it. I was like, oh, is this or is this not? So I didn't know they had like a clear definition within publishing. But I always thought that if it was like think in it, in a current like setting and it had less romance, it was urban fantasy. So I guess that was where I was hung up. I think, I think it's a newer clarified thing. the definition like in the Did past they? like couple years, just because more books of like this okay. element have come out. So they've really defined the. I think it goes into that romanticy versus, so I think instead of urban fantasy, we have to say romantic urban fantasy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. What is there in a rural setting? Well, I think urban is supposed to be more like, (laughs) like developed (laughs) Jenny. Holy crap. Pedantic Penny is live tonight on the podcast. (laughs) Seriously. I put Sydney really in good. her room. Like... I did not expect you to have to go to her room, too. Oh, my god! Can goodness. I say that I love these new covers also? Like, she is recovering most of her books, and I just, I really am enjoying. I don't always like, like, when authors recover, but I really like these new covers. I liked the man covers. I yeah. did, too, but I like these as well. They fit. They do. They do. They fit so much. Anyway, so there's no audiobook as of now, um, and you can find it in Kindle Unlimited. I do think the audio for this book one is coming this year. I think it is. She had Her an announcement. have a tendency to come out later. Um, I also didn't realize this book was from 2020. Like, this series has mm-hmm. been around that long. I thought this was a newer series for her. No, she, so she kind of, I think this is one of those series where like she writes this one when she like has a hankering to write this because like she'll put out two or three contemporaries before she does anything with this series again. And also, Amanda, how has this series been out since 2020 and you haven't read it yet? Because there's a lot of books, Becky, and <laughs> I need well, somebody to make me read them. Like, have you read Samantha Whiskey before this, though? Um, I read a couple of her hockey books, um, but not a lot. So this was like my first like real binge. I think I read Boring. I read two in her original hockey, and then they mm-hmm. were both. Then I had, like took a break. So They're okay. I really liked back. her billionaire game series that she did with the owners of oh, the yeah. different sports teams. Um, those were really good. Lindsay and I, I think, did those rabbit holes and really enjoyed them. Um. And some things she does really well, and not in this book, but in her contemporaries, her plus size rep is pretty spot on. Mm-hmm. I feel like she gets yeah. body types. I think we get an array, and I, I guess you do well, see it a, a little bit in this. We but. get a vast variety of body types from her heroines, which I really appreciate. Like, not everybody is like this cookie cutter, like body types, personality types. Like, it's all very, she's very varied. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk Crimson covenant um and i'm just gonna get this out of the way just gonna get it out of the way and then we can move on y'all can talk about what you left there was zero world building again yeah i mean there's there's not a ton um no there's more sex than world yeah i mean they rely on she's relying a little on like just general vampire lore i think which i appreciated i could follow the vampire lore and nobody sparkled so it gets 10 out of 10 because nobody sparkled. Um, well, and the fact that like they talk about like not being able to go out during the day. And it's like there was like yeah. those classic points yeah. to it. Yeah. And yeah, I think she did a good job of weaving like things into the story instead of telling us. Yeah. Things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the hero first. Our hero's name is Alec. He is the king of all vampires. Yeah. He is a little bit of an alpha hole. A little bit. He is. 
So it's about 400 years old. So, I mean, <laughs> he's kind of got a right to be. <laughs> At 400, you're allowed to be cranky. <laughs> And he's the most powerful supernatural in the world. It, I mean, I think appears. I'd be cranky at 400. Yeah. I mean, my goal in life is to be curmudgeon -y, So, like, um, you were yeah. that last week. So, you won. <laughs> Game over for Leah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what did we think of Alec and his friends? Um, and is there a friend you are more invested in than the other friends? Because I do have a friend I'm a little more invested in. I am very invested in Hawk. I yes. really am intrigued by him and what his story is and why he is a little bit psycho. Yeah. You always yeah. go for the psychos. I, I like, like him. A psycho. <laughs> it's like my catnip. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I liked the covenant. Amanda, oh. did you like the covenant, the friend group that that's why it felt like secret society mafia vibe because mm -hmm. it was found family tight. Yep functioning together have each other's back definitely like a tight-knit brotherhood without brotherhood yeah, yeah i think that's what a big reason like i like a lot of the paranormal urban fantasy ones that i like because you generally get like a group you know if you have shifters you have like a a clan a pack you know if you get witches there's a coven you know you get this like secret society thing with the vampires um I tend to gravitate towards the ones that are like that because I do like the found family. Yeah. Um, and I think Alex, a fairly dynamic leader within this covenant, don't you feel? Mm hmm. Well, and he like he tends to lead with his emotions, but like tries not to lead with his emotions, which I thought was an interesting take. Yeah. So, Jenny, he is not a typical hero for you. No, he's not, but he is respectful yeah. of the situation. So mm -hmm. did you, but did you end up liking him through the book or were you like still irritated with him? I had moments of irritation with him. Yeah, I did too. I think I liked Lyric enough to offset any dislike for him. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Lyric. Leah, why did you, how did you feel about Lyric as a heroine? I actually really enjoyed her as a heroine. I had reservations going in because like she's like thrust into this world that she doesn't understand. And I was like, oh man, is she going to become like the simpering, like too stupid to live idiot? But yeah. she didn't. Like she was very confident. Like she stood up for herself. Like maybe not as much as she could have at times, but at the same rate, like she was thrust like into this chaos, like without any choice yeah but she like she was quite strong in like her decisions and choices and like when like so like the whole like her getting turned part like she was like this is going to happen like we are going to do it and she like she would back off but she still wouldn't let it go which yeah. i thought was nice because a lot of times like you'll come across a heroine who like they really want to do something they're like but if there's enough fight against it, they give up and they're like, well, that's fine. Like, we'll make this choice. But she didn't have that. Like, she was very decisive. Like, she was going to get her doctorate. She was going to, like, become a vampire. She was going to do this and going to do that. And she, like, really stuck to her guns throughout the whole story. Um. Well, I think she comes off, Amanda, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like she comes off as really strong because the sister was such a the princess or hit alex's sister right or her sister oh his sister his sister mm -hmm. the princess oh gianna yeah she aviana. was aviana whatever i was close she was kind of i didn't write her name down because <laughs> i really would like to have yeeted her off of a cliff she gets better are you lying to me no i'm not because her book i'm yes. almost yes, to her book lying. and she's no Keep the gloves off <laughs> I'm in I'm on Benedict's book right now. That's the one and, I'm most interested in. And she's yeah. and she gets much like Aviana gets much better. She has more power than they know about. Okay. I thought so. Because yeah. I wanted to yeet her off a cliff a couple times. Okay. I thought you were talking about Valor because I read your notes and I thought you're I was like, is she talking about Valor? No, okay. I'm talking about Alex's sister. I didn't write her name okay. down because seriously. 
She she was just so stereotypical, the princess. And obviously she's playing a role, but I yeah. found her distracting in the story. I didn't mind it as much with that because I like you like she's coming home after basically being like sequestered purposefully. Yeah. And so like I think it's more of a case where like she is she is playing a role and she is being who she's supposed to be but that's not who she is at all and so like her her story is intriguing to me but like yeah. i knew going into it like she's not what she seems to be no. so she didn't bug me that much that's good yeah and i think she played a good role in this book because she mm -hmm. was the like bridge to kind of like yeah. catch lyric up like get it because yeah. well, alec wouldn't yeah. do it the dumbass so really the story has a lot of kind of good versus evil, but their version of good is really gray good. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I found that very satisfying, especially someone that likes mafia and secret societies. Yeah. Did that gray good bother anybody with how the story flows and how what they do and killing the demons? And I think it no. wouldn't have been as genuine if it hadn't been in the gray. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, did Lyric's virginity bug anyone? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, I think that's fair. Um, I I figured it was going to be you or Jenny that was going to have an issue with it. <laughs> between yeah, and and only because okay, like I mean. I don't know. I just like I get annoyed sometimes. I just feel like like it's a just something to to put in there sometimes and then also i i don't know I, if i read too many in a row i get annoyed and i think i feel like i read like two right before this one that were the same and the part that i think really bugs me is because like she has to be a virgin to be able to get with alec but then mm -hmm. when you get to the other books they don't have to be virgins like it's only to get with the king do you have to be a virgin okay. so i'm like okay well yeah. it was only because she was a well they thought she was a seer right like was it, it okay. yeah because she that was like the loophole to, that she, oh that's she didn't right have, okay she didn't have to be handed over to the demons because yeah. she was still yeah I got, and okay. she's never told right. that like only he knows that so yeah. that's why he makes her wait they had to be married it's like the whole married yeah. and virginity thing i'm just like okay like i don't know yeah, why it bothers like this, me it just well, does and i i think but it's like this archaic piece yeah. to it but as like you're reading the book like you realize like when like all this stuff was laid out it is it is fairly archaic so it's like <laughs> yeah you figure like, like his, his parents have been dead for like a couple hundred yeah. years i think with the way the book plays out but it's like his dad was one of the people who like made some of these like choices. So it's like, yeah, it's really dumb, but it's like 200 years prior to when this book came out, things were very different. Yeah. And it doesn't make or break how I feel about it. It's just, it's just one of those things that just, occasionally will annoy me, you know, it just gave you a little bit of the ick. Yeah. But I think that's fair. I think that that is yeah. fair that it was, um, the pacing of this story works really well. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because I don't think that this book was this book what like maybe seventy five pages less than the Zoe Draven book. No, I think it was more than that. Was it more than that? I just felt like this one read really fast. I think that they were as horny as the Zoe Draven book was. Like you know, people were doing business, getting things going. Um, well, but I think. The, the reason that wasn't as bad because like they talk often talk about like the mating like the mates themselves like how like they are insatiable for each other like for years and years so it like it makes more sense in this one the way that it's laid out and this one's relying more on like this is a current earth like time like I, f I feel mm -hmm. like the setting is is it didn't need as much world building and like like Jenny said like she she shows you like like things that are part of this world without having to tell you a bunch of you know mm -hmm. extra 
details, which I just don't think we didn't, we just didn't even get the details in the Zoe Draven. Actually, they're pretty close. The Zoe Dra Draven it's was 12 pages shorter. Yeah, 320 versus pages. 308. Okay. Yeah, yeah so, I just felt like much. this one read way much faster. And I was, is this my favorite but book? I, no. I think part of it is her style of writing, though, too. Like, she just is a very concise author. So it's like she can say a lot in, like, a couple pages where other authors it takes, like, four yeah. or five pages to say the same thing. And and it goes like and that's just like her writing style like she's a lot more like show than tell and so it's like and also like the way that the the timeline goes through like it's like three or four months like yeah. which you figure the first like six chapters of the book I think it's like three or four weeks and it doesn't feel like three or four weeks but like it feels like three or four weeks at the same time just because of the way that she progresses the story and the characters and all that stuff. Yeah, and she time jumps without you feeling like she time jumped. Mm -hmm. I, I think, think that's something Samantha Whiskey does really well because we yeah. see that mm -hmm. in her other books. She moves time very well. I think the other thing that's really great, and we talked about it a little bit already, but I feel like we need to go back to them. The d other dudes, the other vampires, the other mm -hmm. people really help this yeah. book. Yeah. We don't get a ton of yep. background character development for Lyric. I feel like we could have gotten a little bit more for her. She needed yeah. built up a little bit more. Yeah, I feel like they could have delved into her past a little more. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of it was fairly surface. Well, and I think part of that is like she doesn't know yeah. where she came from either. This is true. No. But those guys, Lachlan and Benedict and Ransom, and Ransom. who is so funny mm -hmm. yeah. in this His book. His book is currently my favorite. It is. Yeah, it's fake dating. Ooh, which yeah. book is he? He is uh, book three. He's with okay. uh, Olivia, the princess's Ooh. guard. How do we fake she, date I a like vampire? Her. There's there's fake like tattoos, like fake mating, like they draw they get the witches to draw one on, like because they have to go to her family's estate and her parents are very traditional vampires and she lied to them. They don't know she's like in service to the princess. I think she's a lady in waiting. Like it's it's good. It's mm. my currently it's my favorite. Like like I said, I'm only on I'm on book four. I'm like twenty percent into Benedict's book, but and see, Benedict was the character that I was, he's the one that spoke to me the most in this book. He, it's good so far. He's honestly, and I, I see that because he is the most mafia-like. He wears mm -hmm. the fancy suits. He's That's very like, like, I would say out of any I mean, of those, he's the most mafia one. Okay. I like a psycho. I uh, like yeah. a mafia dude. I do. Yeah. Um, and that would be a unique power to have, right? Like, oh, just just look at my, yeah, look at my arm. Oh. Yeah. Too bad. Um, is there anything in this book that you thought was outstanding that you were just like, oh my gosh, this is so good and done so right? For me, it was the found family, the brothers, the mm -hmm. the guys, like that. But I think if I if I look on like the billionaire's game series, it's that found family, those tight, mm -hmm. close friends. She, but she does that because even in her hockey series, like, yes, it's a team, but the connection that cr she creates between like these groups, like it's really intricate in the way that she weaves like those like relationships and stuff. And I think that because even the relationship with Valor and Lyric, like there are very different people, but they had such a really intense connection. I think that that's yeah. one thing which I'm really excited because I'm going to read book two because I'm really excited for that because those two are totally going to hate each other. Oh, yeah. It was good hate. <laughs> but, like, I, it, that is the thing that she does really well is, like, these really intense connections that you, like, they come really alive off the page. Yeah, and I can say that she does build the girl gang because you have Lyric and Valor and so then Aviana and then Olivia become part of it mm -hmm. and then... The witch's daughter, um, Jocelyn, like she's mm -hmm. she's becomes part of it. And so I think she's building like also the girl gang. And then she's like, I don't know if she's going to offshoot. I think one of the books is 
um, a group of hunters that come into play, like in another one of the books. So like older vampires that were like vampire hunters, they hunted their own kind. And then mm -hmm. like, I really want, I'm forgetting his name right now, but like, I want the demon. Oh. Oh, oh the Xavier. Demon's book. Xavier. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, and even like with the, like, there's like more witches and there's just so yeah. many character types that she huh. create, like, and Luca, like the lichen side yeah. of everything. I like she could really just go anywhere with this world and it just really Aaron really wants the demon king and yeah, yeah Aaron yeah Aaron and I have been talking about this like the whole time I was reading so um I I do have to say I like how she the different species and I felt like this was a more romantic fluffier version of the Sookie Sackhouse House series mm-hmm because you had demons, you had vampires, you had witches, you had a yeah. little bit of everything in this pot. Um, but it was definitely, you know, more fun. You had humor and fluff. Um, it's yeah. been a minute since I've read Charlene Harris, but I felt like those were a little stodgy compared. Mm -hmm. They're a little grittier, too. They get a yeah. little, you know, you get a little more like detail. Well, and the farther like the... you get into it, it's a little more. Yeah, harsh. I think this is a really approachable, like entry level series for, yeah. you know, urban fantasy, paranormal vampires, yeah. whatever you, because then I think you're getting, you know, eventually, like, I think you get some shifter and you get the witches and like the other stuff. So I, I like it when series do that, when you, well, when you get the all different kinds of supernatural yeah. And the thing with like a lot of like urban fantasy and romanticy, like they're just such long stories. Like they're yeah. like huge sagas. And the nice thing about these is like you can come in and read 300 pages and then step away if you want to. Like you're yeah. not like drawn into this like seven book, 3000 page tome that like you like can't put down, but you're like stuck. Um, and I do have to agree with you, Amanda, as somebody who doesn't read a ton of paranormal out of this world books, and I tend, to, if I'm going to read them, I tend to read the ridiculous ones like The Couch and yeah. Adore. Kool-Aid Man. Um, <laughs> Kool-Aid Man. I tend to read those. Yeah. This one was very palatable, but I will say it took me. It was. I started it last night during Silent Book Club. I quickly put it down because I wanted to finish that Nissa Catherine book, which oh yeah is Leah's fault. It's really good. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> and I picked it back up this morning after I got my work done, and it, I got through it very fast. Um, yeah, but it's fluffy, it's light, but it is very much palatable vampires. Yeah, it's mac and cheese vampires. It is. It is. And maybe it doesn't need the world building then because it is kind of well, so easy and fluffy. But like I was telling you today when we were talking, like it's set in more of a modern scale. Yeah. Like you don't need the world building because it's like basically like this vampire, like this covenant coalition essentially like plucked into like real time. So it's like because like they have smartphones, they have like everything is like contemporary aside from the fact that they are vampires and lichens and demons and all that stuff so it's like i don't necessarily need the world building when there's that contemporary element to it um and i do think this story had quite a bit of deception trope i mean there's secrets there's lies mm -hmm. there's you know falsehoods being shared did that bother anybody or because of the mystery shrouding they're them being vampires it feels a little easier to handle i would say oh. that's a question for jenny i'm waiting on to yeah. answer <laughs> no, I, was, I think it's easier because they kind of discuss like they have this set of humans that knows they exist and then like it's just better if the rest of us are unaware um mm -hmm. and he tells her for our quick. own quick yeah like well and he realizes like she can't see the glamour so oh, yeah 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 well, there's obviously something else going on there so yeah it didn't bother me um because if there's a vampire in my life like I, yeah i'd rather not know just deceive me <laughs> yep just deceive me. i want to be lied to lie yeah. to me 
<laughs> but I think like when it's this style of book, like the deception and secrets and things like that is definitely more palatable than it is sometimes like deception, like a mafia book doesn't bother me as much as it does in contemporary. Like I have a hard time sometimes with deception and like contemporary romance because it is more mainstream for the lack of a better term, but like mafia doesn't always bother me. And like in fantasy paranormal, it rarely bothers me as long as it, it makes sense because yeah. of like the way that it plays out. Like if it doesn't make sense, then it bothers me. But I mean, if it, if nothing makes sense, like it bothers me, it doesn't have to be deception. Um, yeah, I'm much more lenient with my mm -hmm. tropes in paranormal. Like I don't care. Like if it's, you know, give me the hundred year age gap. Like I'm, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Like I'm Amanda I'm much has more no lenient. rules. Amanda has no rules, I no know. triggers There's, in paranormal. I'm, but I'm very much harder on contemporary <laughs> because that's you know, that because mimics real like life. Exactly. <laughs> like there's a whole there's a whole different like mindset when you're in the the fantasy like PNR yeah. world. So there's a lot of action in this book, and I do like that we get some character development along with storyline development within the action, and I do think that that helps the pacing. Um, there were a couple moments where I was like, oh, we're going to have another battle. Yay. Um, <laughs> I felt like it was battle, sex, sex, battle, battle, sex, battle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just, you know... Did the action, like, were you okay with the amount of action? Do you feel like there was overaction, not enough action? There was a lot of near death. Right. Like, hanging on to the edge of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's typical. <laughs> so. Amanda's just like, seriously, you guys, this is just <laughs> par for the course. We are three weeks in. Get over it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I mean, if you don't read it a lot, I mean, it's definitely different. So, but yeah, Lots I mean, I don't mind it. Style. I like it. I think it balances out, you know, it just, it lends another like thing to that whole otherworldly because, you know, mm -hmm. people aren't running around battling each other all the time. I just, I think it just reinforces how otherworldly, like, like these kinds of situations are. Yeah. I mean, there might be just not where we live. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Again, we could have vampires in our life. Jenny just doesn't want to know. <laughs> like the zombies they can just eat me like i'm not yeah i'm not living yeah there. i'm not yeah. putting up a fight sorry mm -mm. <laughs> um okay is there anything else within this book that you really feel like we should talk about i really liked that she was like flat out said are we gonna go all twilight because i thought she was pregnant and i was like no that's not cool and yeah, she totally flipped it around. I thought that was that was very well done. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny. I think that's Samantha Whiskey. She likes those one liners in her book like that. Like and, and they're well placed. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. she calls herself out, like in her contemporary. She'll call her own self out yeah. in the books. So which I, I appreciate, appreciate that. Yeah. Cause don't ever take yourself so seriously. Um <laughs> Jeremy ripped in the zombie horde, Jenny. <laughs> it's fine. She Apparently she's I dying stand. with our friends because everybody's <laughs> letting the zombies have Adams. So. I would not live well in a zombie-led world. Good to know. I don't have a lot of attributes that would be, like, helpful. So. It's the lack of electricity. The it's the lack of electricity. Right. Yeah. I can't charge I mean, my Kindle. Like, well, I, at that point, like, I'll read my paperback. Right. I got. <laughs> but how I got am I going to carry them all? I'm not moving. Like, I am just locking the door and like yeah. waiting for them to come. It is ironic to me how often in the past, like, three weeks, I have talked about living through the zombie apocalypse. I mean, that time of year. Okay. It is. This is true. I just, you know, I'm not in the best of shape. So if we have to trek far places, I'm just going to stay here. You know? You could just, like, attach a sled to Ollie and we're yeah. good. I don't know. That dog. Ollie could pull the sled. Yeah. 
Um, he's very cute, but I'm starting to wonder how many brain cells actually connect inside that head. I spent a lot of time going, are there thoughts in there, buddy? <laughs> I mean, there might be big thoughts, just. He's very food motivated. So if we have treats. <laughs> I mean. I was making oatmeal this morning with blueberries and bananas. And he is literally like trying to, his head is on the counter and I'm moving him back. And I'm like, I'm cutting my banana. And he's like right in it. Then I give him a piece of banana. He really wanted some banana. He just spits it out and makes a mess on the floor. It's fine. I love him. Um, okay. Anything else in Crimson Covenant that we need to talk about? Okay. Yep. We've covered it all. Okay. Um, and I'll just be very clear that I am probably now going to have to go uh, read Benedict's book um, because I licked him in this book. So. <laughs> If I have to have a zombie vampire, or whatever he is, he is mine. Truth telling vampire. vampire. He's he's like the lie detector. Right. He is, is yeah. the lie detector vampire. And he's fancy. And I like a fancy he is man. Fancy. He is fancy. I like a fancy guy. Um, I think it's funny when she's like, my eyes are brown. And his, his arm changes and they all get pissed off. I really it's want his book. Thing. So... Um, okay, let's do our thumbs up, thumbs down. And then if anybody has any books, we can go to that. Uh, Amanda, thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up. Jenny, thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up. Really? Yeah, I started reading book two, and then I realized that I need to read the book club book before right. Saturday. And yeah. I have the audio. <laughs> I'm doing the audio tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Leah, thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up for me. Um, I think this is a thumbs up for me. It's a hesitant thumbs up because I do not want anyone to think I'm going to start reading vampire books on the regular. Like You can still give it a thumbs up even yeah. if you're not going to read them regularly. I just don't want to give anyone false It doesn't enough. have to be hesitantly. Yeah. And you're interested enough to read another one. I possibly. am. I am. So. But I do think it comes down to I'm familiar with Samantha Whiskey's writing. I like yeah. her writing. And I think that that helps. I think it definitely helps. Um, okay. So if people really liked this book or they would like to dive into more vampires, one of the suggestions that I kept seeing was the Black Brotherhood Dagger. Black Dagger Brotherhood Brother yeah, by Black... J.R. Ward. Yes. yes. And I'm sorry, I haven't read those books, but all I keep thinking of is the Green Shirts Jenny. I know. Would you like I, a bookmark? I got Nope. I think you all are vampires. We went to the re the JR Ward signing down in Louisville last yeah. year, and her fans are devout. Yeah, they are and really devout. This is like that's that's the other series. It's very secret brotherhood, you know, brotherhoods in the name. So you're definitely getting a lot of that. I will say that that series is a little grittier. It's a little, you know, there's a little. The, consent is dubious in some of those earlier books. Okay, um, and some of those early books are they're a little. They're a lot more of their time because those are older books. Mm -hmm. So just just check yourself before you get into those. I know that Merritt loves them and yeah. is currently yeah. um, obsessed with the casting updates we're getting yes. for the Passion Flix series that is coming. Yeah. So what There's other books? A lot of those, right? There's like yeah. twenty five of them. Okay. Yeah, it's I would also say The Immortals After Dark by Cressley Cole. Okay. Which is another, that's an older series too. Um, so you're going to get into a little, a little more like, you know, kind of like maybe like an remind you more of a bodice ripper style book. Um, but those are very good too. You're getting a mix of supernaturals in that. And there's a, the first one is like the warlord wants forever. And that's more of a novella. So you can kind of, it's in KU and you could check it out to see if you like that style of writing, but he's also like a, a very powerful like vampire lord um she's a valkyrie um so those are pretty you know pretty similar i would think but more along the lines of like black dagger brotherhood and then if you like the 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 additional powers like that they have like the fact that they all have like some kind of you know something or other like the lie detector i would say the elemental elemental mysteries by elizabeth hunter um those are mostly vampires and they all have like different powers that are tied to like 
the elements. So like fire, water, wind, okay. um, those are really good. Um, she's got a lot of story interwoven. There may be a little less sexy times in those, um, but they're really good. The first one's a hidden fire. So I like those. Have you read the Jacinda Wilder vampire books? I have not. Okay. Um, I know they have a vampire series out. I have not read it yet. Mm -hmm. I think. Is that the Why Choose? No. Yes. No. Is it? Yes. I didn't think it was. I thought that was a different one. No, it's. I think the, I have it. It's the Blood or something. Maybe it is the Why Choose. I was thinking a different one. Hold on. I'm going to look it up. Um, um, Rowan Hart, if you like the oh, mafia yeah. vibe of your vampire books, Rowan Hart has the Nightshade Vampires. Lindsay is the one who has raved about the series. I yeah. really enjoy it. They have the demons and it's the humans mating with the vampires. So it's like that division of species. Um, but it's a really well done series. It's a little bit darker. So I mean, that's something to think about. An 80 award also yeah. known as Amy Award, has a vampire series. They're a little lighter because um, it's Amy. Um, but those <laughs> ones, fun. yeah, they're a fun read. Honestly, anything that she writes is a fun read. So, But it is the Vampires Crave Curves series because all of her heroines are real-bodied. Um, it, it's the Blood blood Air uh series by Jacinda Wilder and it is why choose um uh -huh. and so and that Quicksilver have you read that yet by um Callie Hart oh is that one vampire uh-huh oh, okay I don't know why I thought that was Faye for some Faye reason no I have not alchemy read it. and vampire I think it's a mix isn't it yeah oh, okay yeah it's getting like crazy reviews and it came out as an indie published book and then forever bought it Mm -hmm. they yeah, it, it looks really, really good after it released in less than two days yeah they um, had it and, bought and then i would say like they don't call them vampires they call them something else but i'm very like obsessed with the from blood and ash by jennifer l armentrout like it's much more fantasy um they are very vampire like there's a lot of world building um i i'm like in that one pretty deep so far so. <laughs> yeah and i would say that does Juliet Cross and her series have vampires. Oh yeah, two of them. Uh, Ruben is a is a vampire. Yeah. Ruben and Dev. But I would say, yeah. like, as far as lightness and pacing yeah. a story, mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. like this Samantha Whiskey series falls into that same kind of pacing vibe mm -hmm. that we got yeah. um, in the Juliet Cross series. Um, and I've read the Katie Robert, like the vampire queen ones those are super dark oh are they I haven't read yeah. those but they're pretty good i mean they're katie i like her i love her yeah, yeah. cynthia awesome. eden has some vampire books also and aren't they um, like a security vampires. force vampires like no not those ones um it's more um well, I think she she has a couple different ones. Like there's some of her older books. And then Lonnie Lynn Vale actually has a vampire book also. It's called Suck This. It it's it's very good. It's it's, it's humorous. You should just read it. Just read it. That's funny. Okay. Um, make sure you join us Sunday. Um, I think that it's just me, Jenny, and Lindsay on Sunday. Amanda, are you coming Sunday? No, we have friends coming into town. Okay. Well, actually, they're here now, but yeah. Um, it's our Inside Baseball Romance So episode. basically, it's Lindsay yeah. talking with Jenny and Becky holding her back. Yeah. Lindsay has the only two baseball series that I've read and recommend, so she's going to have me covered. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are gearing up for the World Series, and so we will be doing all the baseball romances. Um this coming Sunday and then we are back next Wednesday to chat about our buzzing book club selection wedded to the alien warlord by January bell. Um, and I'm sure that it's aliens and I'll love it. I'm sure I love it. I don't know. It'll She's very sweet. I sent my drink recommendations. Cause if you're part of book club, I send a reminder email at the beginning of the book club week with drink recommendations 
And she was like, oh, my God, these are so great. These are such great drink wrecks. Um, I can't wait for this. And I'm like, OK, well, I hope everybody book club brings their A game because <laughs> authors um, be there. Um, authors are excited mm -hmm. about it. So, mm -hmm. um, okie dokie. Uh, that's it for this episode. Okie dokie. <laughs> earlier today i was on a call like a business call and i said easy peasy <laughs> i'm like oh goodness i need to get out um anyway i want to say it again okie dokie uh that's it for this episode <laughs> of crimson covenant by samantha whiskey um you can find uh, some of the books we recommended over on our on the shelf show notes at buzzingaboutromance.com. Thank you everybody for joining me this evening. Thanks for having us. It's always a good time. Until next time, everybody. Happy reading, everybody. Find us on Instagram at buzzingaboutromance or on Twitter at buzzingromance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes.